One more thing that um, has been really heavy on my mind, um, and I wanted to share it with you because <clears throat> as a part of the membership, my perception of us is us meaning us in membership, uh, the membership, I guess, group, is that we're in an energy where we want to grow, right? We're in an energy where we want to elevate and we want to understand things to a certain degree or there's an energy behind us where um, learning, right? And it's funny because I always said to my dad, like, I just want to be a really good mom. Like, I, I want to raise my, my boys and I want them to say, like, man, my mom, like, busted her ass. Like, my mom may have been a single mom, but, like, she was a hustler. Like, she did everything. There was nothing that we didn't have emotionally, physically, mentally, in any capacity. And the one thing my dad said to me was, he said, um, you only become a bad parent when you stop learning, and I feel like that's the same concept when it comes to our soul growth, right? Just as imperative as it is for us to learn other things, it's also about our growth and what we're doing. So this topic I'm getting ready to talk about, it may resonate for you or it may not, but I do want to talk about the kind of the terminology of karmic, karmic energy, um, the karmic, you know, verbiage the energy behind karmic, okay? So for me personally, um, a karmic energy, I feel like all of us have been a karmic at one point in time, right? Um, you know, we haven't been our best self to somebody, whether it's to our own self, to a friend. Um, it just depends, right? And I feel like, you know, for us, especially if you're in love and you're dealing with somebody who's interfering in your connection consistently and constantly, um, it's easier for us to demonize that person or it's easy for us to say that's a karmic energy, right? Because it's becoming competition. It's you versus them, right? It's they want what you want. So it's like you're kind of sizing up the competition. And I feel like our viewpoint on that needs to change because at the end of the day, you are each an individual that's going through an individual experience. How they're going through that experience may be positive or it may be negative, but that's something that they're still going through. That's somebody that still has um, a deep love for somebody or that's somebody that is scared of letting go. Because to me, a karmic energy is somebody that wants to hold on very tightly to a connection because they're scared of what's to come in the future. Even if that person doesn't love them, even if that person feels like, even if your person feels obligated, and maybe that obligation is due to, you know, um, their burdens that they have with that person. Maybe they have children, maybe they have finances, uh, maybe it's a cultural thing, you know, and maybe this person is using things to manipulate this person into staying. But if you really break it down with why they're manipulating the person to stay, it's not because they're like, I'm out to get them. Ha 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 ha. It's, it's, it's that person being scared of change. It's that person not being confident with inside of themselves to say, you know what? If you don't love me, I don't want to be with you right? If it's, it's this person saying, you know what? I love you enough to know that, that if you're in love with somebody else, I respect you and I love you and, and I'm okay to let you go. And if you come back to me, then it's, then it's mine, right? But you also have to understand like that takes a level of elevation because at one point in time, we were all a karmic energy where maybe we didn't want to let go of something or maybe we were incapable of letting go of our own ego, right? Making that call, reaching out, saying something. Um, it could be a multitude of things, right? But I think that our perception on a karmic energy, I think it needs to change because by holding on to this negative energy or this negative perception of this person, what you're doing is you're giving this person a sense of weight. 
you're you're putting this person somewhere where they're collecting um, space in your head that they're even an important factor. And the reality is this. When your person is at the same elevation as you, the low vibrational energy dissipates. And low vibrational energy, it's just energy that hasn't evolved yet. It's, it, it's, it's, it's almost as if you're trying to explain to a toddler what quantum physics is and then being confused when they don't understand and they just want to go, you know, pick their boogers and color the walls. So I think that, I feel like if we can change our perception on the energy pertaining to karmic, to the karmic energy, to that karmic vibe, to that karmic lingo, I feel like a lot is going to change. And I feel like there's going to be a pressure that's lifted off of you because you're no longer viewing that person as competition, but you're also having a sense of empathy, right? You don't need to feel bad for them, but there's empathy because you can understand that you were at that point at some point in time. You can put yourself in that, their shoes and say, you know what, I could see why it would be hard for that person to let go. I could see why it would be hard for that person. Maybe they made wrong choices. Maybe this is somebody that has mental health issues, that hasn't gotten the help. But their actions say more about them and where they are in their journey than it does you. But how you react to this person and the energy that you give to this person says everything about you. I know, mind blown, right? Because I was thinking about this, th- that this morning going, holy, holy, holy shit, right? Like we're looking at this from a completely different perspective. It's like, We're focusing on the negative. We're focusing on us versus them. And the reality is it's not. It's not an us versus them. Because your person, at the end of the day, it's their choice with who they choose to be with. But it's easier for us to make that person our enemy so that we can justify our dislike for that person when in reality you guys may just love the same person or that person that friend or that mother that's holding them back it's because you know they want control over their child or control over their friend because they love them and they're scared or maybe that person is giving them money or supporting them in some sense but they're scared to let go of the control of what's to come that is somebody that's scared of the future so they're holding on to whatever they can because They're not in an elevated place to know what's to come. They're the caterpillar, right? They're going a lot slower. You're a butterfly. You have a level of foresight to what's to come in a way that this person never could have. So I think it's, again, I think it's about us tweaking it. Even for you, if you're connected to a karmic energy that won't let you go, that's a stage five clinger, I think it's just having empathy. Like, I know that's how you feel, but I'm sorry. I don't have that feeling for you, but I want you to find somebody that loves you and that can grow with you. And you may not understand it now, but soon you will because you deserve love. The karmic deserves love. And I've always been somebody that says, I never take revenge out on people. I don't believe in revenge. Because for me, the moment that you step off your pedestal, the moment that you come down to ground level, you're at that vibration. You're at that low vibration. Why would you do that? You've worked so hard to grow. You've worked so hard to have that elevation. Why would you cheapen yourself in order to retaliate or in order to be negative or send negative energy? You're not meant to do that. But when I would say, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, because I'm always, you know, I like to be very transparent, but I would always pray for the karmic energy in my situation. Pray for light, pray for happiness, pray for love for that person or people that were around my person. Because I understood that if they were able to find that within inside of themselves, 
then they would have an easier time letting go or that they would have a sense of peace with inside of themselves where they could elevate and they could see the grand scheme of things or the larger picture. Now, sorry, this is turning into a TED talk, but I feel like I feel like this is very, very significant. And I also feel like there's somebody here that needs to hear this or there's somebody that needs to... Um, And maybe I won't even put this out as a collective. I may just put this out as um, a small reading because there's something very significant to what I'm trying to say here. So I always believed in that manner, but at the same point in time, I did hold a level of animosity towards certain people. Because again, it was me versus them. But when you begin to understand that you're in a lane of your own, you you don't compete. It's not competing where you don't compare because that person probably has amazing qualities or else, you know, your divine counterpart wouldn't be close to them. Or maybe it's a situation where, you know, something happened and they got wrapped up and they did the right, whatever the situation is, right? It's not for us to judge. But at the same point in time, In this energy, in this vibration, we're all human. We all have a mother and a father, right? It's like having a sense of humility for people that are going through things and people that are not as, I guess, further along in the journey as you are. So I feel like if we're able to tweak it, even if this is somebody that's doing voodoo or black magic or whatever it may be, right? Whatever this person is doing, again, it says more about them than it does you. And if you are at a high vibration, if you put your trust in God, in the universe, in, you know, your, if, if, you know, your deities, Allah, whatever you believe in, right? Because the reality is you believe in something, that's encouraged your level of spirituality, right? So if you really do have this, this mentality, then you understand that the higher you elevate, that energy can't hurt you because at the center of it, you have your own faith and you have faith that as long as you live the path that you're meant to live, right? In that energy, that nothing can hurt you in that way. And granted, whatever comes up must come down. So whatever that person is doing, manipulating, using energy as a tool to control people, places, things, that energy is always going to go back to them. And they're still going to have to sit with it. Because true love, real love, that breaks all barriers. That breaks all boundaries. That person may be able to delay your partnership, but they'll never be able to deny what's meant for you. And that's something that God has set forth for you for a reason, for a period of time. So I just wanted to kind of come out here and just have this conversation about this, you know, karmic energy, because it's interesting. I just, I don't feel like it's an us versus them thing. I think that it's about a growth. And I think that if your person is at a place where they're open for that elevation and they're ready to change, nothing that that karmic energy is going to do or say is going to keep them from you. And at this point, until your person is able or capable of elevating, they're gonna, they are in a karmic energy. That they are at that vibration. That's why those people stay together. And that's a hard truth to swallow. But, it, but the reality is, that's the truth. So let me know below, what are your thoughts on this? Because I'm really, really curious to kind of um, hear from you guys. I definitely, I've changed my mind. I do think that I'm going to put this out on YouTube. Um, I I just want to know, like, what is your perception on things? And again, I just... I think when you're at an elevated energy, you know, one of the things it's like, you're never meant to retaliate. You're meant to pray. That's not our responsibility. We're carrying burdens. We're not meant to carry. We're meant to give that to God. If God created all of us, you're going to tell me that God is going to be okay for us taking out an action that he's, he or she is meant to take. I don't think so. 
I feel like that is their direct, you know, with God. It's, it, it, it's almost as if, you know, your child does something negative at somebody else's house and that parent decides to put their hands on your child. You're going to be like, hold up player, right? This is my kid. You know, if, 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 if they're going to get, you know, in trouble, that's my decision. It's not yours. But what you're supposed to do is that parent is supposed to notify you so that you can take, you know, manners or things into your own hand. I feel like we are all God's children. Okay, we are all equal, believe it or not. I know people don't like that theory, but we are all equal. How we go about life is different, but everybody here is the same. No one is better than anybody else. I know, mind blowing, right? Some people, some people, that's going to upset a lot of people that I said that, but it's true. We are all made equal. We all have the ability to change. We all have the ability to grow. We all have our own d- distinct path. Therefore, it is up to God to handle his children. Don't take on that stress. I don't want the stress. When I have one of my son's bad little friends here, I'm like, oh no, Mm -mm. you're not going to be in my energy again. And I'm going to let your parent know, you know, that you're an absolute turd. So then your parent can handle it. And if your parent doesn't handle it, that's none of my business, but you're not going to be in my energy anymore. So it's about setting these boundaries, but it's also about checking ourselves, right? Having that moment of honesty with our own self where we need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Because you know, there's that one guy that goes, ain't no way, right? When he finds out something like a hack, ain't no way, okay? I'm going to allow somebody to live rent-free, uh, have condos in my head over an energy that I've well grown above. And I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I'm not, but I've elevated. I've done the work. And if I've done the work, why would I go pick my nose and color on walls still? So, Sound off below. What is your thoughts and opinions on this? Let me know. I'm really, really curious. And um, I hope that we can have an open discussion together as one. And maybe as a collective, we can change the perception and kind of that negative connotation around the terminology or the verbiage of, of karmic. I love you guys so much. I hope you're having an amazing Thursday. Today is Jupiter day. Go out there, do something, go get a lotto ticket. I don't know. Today may be your lucky day. And, um, I love you guys. And until next time or till tomorrow, we have a reading dropping tomorrow. Are you guys ready? All right. I love you. And, um, you mean the world to me. Go out there, go dance, go listen to music, go do something that makes you happy today. If you honestly, if you're in an energy where you're smiling and you're vibing and you're jamming, I'm telling you, there's going to be some type of significant abundance that comes to you because you're elevating your vibration on this beautiful day of Jupiter, Sagittarius and Pisces. All right, my loves, until next time, I will talk to you later.